Stephen, UK assets then. I've got a chart here. 3202 shows the pound and a skew reversal that we're seeing in the pound. We've gone from a situation, uh, went from favouring calls to favouring puts. January was pretty strong for the pound, but it was weak for the dollar, I guess, is the, is the bigger picture, isn't it? So how much is the, how much is the UK story and the pound all about the politics for you? Or is the Bank of England's in the mix as well? Sure. Well, God, lots of, lots of things to ask there. I think the first point I would make here is don't look at cable just to see how the pound is doing. If you look at euro sterling, um, the pound is still relatively weak. So I would agree with your opening comment. A lot of the rise in cable is dollar weakness, which mm. we saw across the board, like euro dollar up at 125. Um, we would argue there's probably a bit too much optimism, however, still built into the pound at the moment. And I think the politics is the key point. I think the market took the view that because discussions didn't collapse back in December, that therefore things are going to continue to go smoothly. There was a constructive tone. Exactly. <laughs> but I think there's a lot of risks going on at the moment. And as we saw with the press over the weekend, that the next date to focus on now is March. Theresa May wants a transition deal to be agreed by March. That's a big ask. That's it's quite, um, I, I think, an optimistic view. And to get back to markets here, this is happening while cable is very strong. And in our positioning data at BNP Paribas, we have a net long position on the pound. Um, not something we haven't seen quite um, consistently since the Brexit vote. So the point I would make is that the pound is actually vulnerable at these levels. And our view um, at the bank is that the pound is likely to weaken from here, particularly if there's any political disappointments. We have the Bank of England this week. Nobody, nobody presumes that there will be a change in rates from the Bank of England. Now, Carney has intimated in his language and his tone that he wants to get back to normal, which is dealing with inflation. Where do you as a high say the BOE will go? Because we've got this global conversation on rates. I know equity markets and bond markets are under pressure at the moment, but the fundamental conversation hasn't gone away about where we go with rates sure. for the BOE. Well, our view is this week we could see a bit of a dovish uh, bent mm. uh, in, the, in the discussion. That's not guiding towards a May hike then? No. Uh, the market's almost or more than 50% price for that May hike. Um, but the point we would say is inflation's getting close to a peak. And we think growth is suffering in the UK. We have a below trend, oh, sorry, below consensus forecast for UK GDP this year at the time when inflation is peaking. So we think we could get a bit of a dovish leaning from the Bank of England this week. Probably still some consenters, maybe two, voting for a hike. But we don't think we're going to get a, a shift to a more hawkish tone from the Bank of England. So that's where we go on that, on the, on that story. In, in terms of the other, well, in terms of Europe then, if we look at the, the Eurozone, uh, we talked in the last hour with Lucy McDonald about the strength in the Euro, and she said, looking back, she could see how the strong Euro had, had, had damaged earnings to some mm. extent mm. in the last quarter. Is that evident for you already, that the strength in the currency is, is hurting some European corporates? Uh, you, it's interesting. You are seeing it. A, a, a cautionary point I would make here, a bit like um, sterling when we discussed, I wouldn't look just at euro sterling. Uh, we look at the euro trade weighted index. And from that perspective, the euro is far less strong than it is if you just look at, at, at euro dollar. So there is a, an FX impact there, but it's not as large as some would suggest. Our view and what our equity strategists are saying is that the best way to uh, trade European equities are probably mid caps because these are companies that have more exposure to domestic demand in Europe, which is strong, less export focus, so less impact from an appreciating currency.